Hey all, this is David Ducker coming back at you. And today I'm going to be talking about random encounters. Uh, this is an off maligned um, idea about random encounters. And it really depends on how you handle it. I love what I call random encounters. You might just call them encounters though. Uh, it really depends, again, on how you handle it. So let's start off by talking about how you do it wrong. What's the wrong way to do it? Uh, the wrong way to do a random encounter is to roll randomly on a table to determine what it is and then play through it. Um, I've even seen GMs roll to determine if there will be a random encounter and then roll randomly if there is a random encounter to determine what the encounter will be. So to me, that's a big, big mistake. Uh, that's, you know, that's two mistakes right there. Um, and, and so you can definitely do it wrong. And, and doing them too often, you know, that'll turn your game obviously into a beat em up, a hack and slash style game. And, and that can lose a lot of the interest as well. Uh, now that's, that's somewhat debatable. Uh, but in general, you know, it's, it's a risk you could face. Uh, so that's how to do them wrong. Do them randomly, do them often, uh, make them as random as possible. Uh, that, that's not generally going to be good for the health of your game. Uh, because you've got to conserve detail. Every single thing you do should have a reason. It should have a payoff. It, it should, you know, build up, build up, build up, and up and up, uh, right up into the sky. Don't build something up just to knock it down and have it be forgotten. Because then what did you get out of it? You wasted that time, probably. You know, time is money. And I did a whole video on time is money. Uh, I also did a whole video on pacing. And pacing is one of the primary reasons to have random encounters to display the passage of time, uh, to make it stretch out. If you're traveling between uh, Nuln and uh, Middenheim on foot for some reason, if you're walking from Nuln to Middenheim on foot, uh, there, will be a, there should be a difference in how that journey feels versus if you're heading between Nuln and Averheim uh, on foot. Again, foot is not the best way to travel, but uh, what I mean is if you're going someplace that's close to you, you can easily uh, montage over that, narrate over that. You might have a single encounter as well, uh, depending on the pacing you want to bring across. So, you know, if I'm going here to the next city over, you might have a little trouble between here and there, probably not, and, and then we'll get there. But if I'm heading from here to a faraway city in the middle of the wilderness uh, through, you know, banded infested countryside uh, to show how hazardous and how long this journey is. As the GM, I'm going to throw encounter after encounter after encounter at them and really make this journey feel dangerous and get feel like a long journey. Just grind them, just grind on them all through the journey. Um, until they finally get there and then we'll realize like wow there's a good reason uh, nobody <laughs> walks from here to Mindenheim. Uh there's there's a really good uh, you know they'll really get a feel for the geography like it really did take us days and days to get here uh, weeks or months or whatever it, it would be it took us a long time to get here uh, because you know they're doing things with it uh, dead air, if you say it took you one day to walk between uh, Mid Nuln and Averheim versus if you say it took you uh, 10 days to walk between Nuln and Middenheim, those will feel the same. I mean, it's, it's intellectually, it's a different amount of time, but the way you said it, it feels exactly the same. Uh, so make it feel different and, and use a, encounters as a pacing tool. The other thing uh, that you can do with encounters, the other reason to use them, are to sh flesh out your areas, to show the local flora, fauna, threats, uh, etc. So if they travel through the Reichwald Forest and they're attacked by bandits, 
now they'll know there's a problem with bandits in the Reichwald Forest. Um, there are bandits who live there, you know, uh, especially if they've heard about the bandits and they travel through the forest. If they don't encounter them, it, it'll feel incongruous, or it could. Uh, now, that in itself, incongruity could be a plot hook. But uh, typically, for your baseline, you want this consistency. I've heard there are bandits there, and then they go there, and there are bandits there. Then they go, they, they move through the forest to Middenheim, which is on the other side, and uh, they get to Middenheim, and everybody's like, oh, you walked through the Reichwald? Didn't, didn't, didn't bandits attack you? And they're like, yes, of course, there are bandits in the forest. Everyone knows this. And not just to show bandits or people, not just to say, oh, there's a cult in uh, in the Dread Moors, or there's a, or there's a frequent caravans traveling between uh, Knoll and Middenheim. If there were, uh, then it would make sense for them to encounter a caravan. That might be a non-combat encounter, you know, just the, the caravan master wanting to trade goods or offer to share the campfire. Caravan master's daughter might might uh, get try to get in their pants, or uh, you know they they might uh, they might try to steal from them and and move along or wh whatever the case may be that that could be a fun little encounter and it could push the fact that this is a major trade route you ran into a caravan it's a trade route that makes sense now you know it you haven't just heard it now you've experienced it you know uh, show don't tell. Uh, it's good to do both, but whenever you can show something, uh, do that. And it's not, uh, again, back to my point, uh, it's not just people. It can be uh, the wildlife as well. Oh, there's manticores in the World's Edge Mountains. Oh, there's orcs in the Black Mountains. Oh, there's, there's The Grey Mountains are extraordinarily peaceful, however. Uh, so as, if they're traveling through all these mountains... They should feel different. You know, the, the World's Edge Mountains have uh, manticores and griffins and dragons and wyverns and, uh, you know, uh, Jotun trolls, big monsters everywhere. These are the mountains of monsters, monster mountain. Uh, and then when they get through the Black Mountains, though, uh, these mountains are inhabited by, uh, by orcs and perhaps by trolls as well uh, or by goblins. And these are the mountains of, uh, of barbarians. But there's not very many monsters there. Uh, and then when they get to the Grey Mountains, it's like, oh, finally, the Grey Mountains. And they might run into, like, dwarfs patrolling the mountains, keeping them safe. Uh, and the dwarfs will be like, you know, I don't know about you guys. You're not bad bandits, are you? Like, that guy might be, a, is, it, is that a half-orc? And the players will be like, no, 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 we're so happy to be in the Grey Mountains, like, where you guys actually patrol and there aren't orcs like they're in the Black Mountains, or Manticores like they're in the World's Edge Mountains. And you can really make even the same terrain type feel different uh, just by using different encounters when you're there in that particular area. Uh, and often this will be a, a two-fold effect. So if you are traveling, uh, let's pick a different terrain. Let's pick the, uh, the Great Forest. If you're traveling through Laurel Lorne and then through the Drakwald Forest and into the Griffin Woods, which are all part of the Great Forest, but if you're traveling through all of these places, they should all feel different, and these encounters uh, will serve to show the passage of time that the forest is great, it's huge. So, of course, you're going to have a lot of encounters, and each encounter can be customized to the sub uh, uh, area, to the locale. So in the uh, the Griffin's Woods, they might encounter, you know, again, more monsters, so giant spiders, tree ants, uh, zombies. And then when they move through the Drakwald Forest, now they're going to have forest orcs to deal with, uh, satyrs that are not friendly satyrs. These are, these are mean satyrs. They're feral. And, uh, and then they get through the Laurelorn, and it's like, oh, finally there's elves here. The elves will, will protect us, and fairies. Fairies are pretty nice. Um, so really contrast that, you know, the monstrous forest, the barbaric forest, and then the, the friendly forest. Even just the way the trees are, you know, the griffins wood might have, a, like, like huge um, 
trees covered in moss that's been undisturbed for thousands of years. The Dracula forest could have like a lot of trees that are like uh, chopped down or big areas of burn uh, blight where an orc started a forest fire and there's still this big clearing with ashes everywhere. And then the Lorelorn might be very nice, kind of well-kept uh, forest, lots of game trails. Uh, so you really contrast that. Um, so show off the geography with random encounters. Show off the passage of time with random encounters, or the lack of them. You know, like I said, the Grey Mountains, uh, you might travel a long ways and not encounter anything. And when you do, it might just be patrols or a caravan of, of dwarfs, and they're very friendly. So that will show the Grey Mountains as being the civilized area versus the Black Mountains where you get encounters, uh, you know, every two days you run into something, some different orc band trying to kill you. You know, first it was the uh, the Bloody Foot band. And, uh, and then you ran into the, the King Kong knee drop band, and then you ran into the, uh, you know, the, the frog spawn poison clan of orcs. And every couple of days, more, more different orcs trying to kill you. Uh, or maybe the next day you run into, uh, orcs fighting each other. They want to kill each other too. And, and then you, you get into the Black Mountains, and, uh, you know, every, every week you encounter a, a big powerful enemy like a Jotun troll, or a, a rock, an enormous eagle, or, a, you know, a, a, a pride of manticores out hunting, and they're hunting for you, uh, or whatever it is. And, and again, describe them differently. The Grey Mountains are, are have lots of roads and paths, aqueducts, fortresses, uh, with ban banners flying, versus the uh, Black Mountains are, you know, darker, craggier. The, the roads there are are terrible. And uh, if, if there is a bridge, it's a scraggly ass rope bridge. And then, of course, the World's Edge Mountains, there's no sign of civilization. They're huge mountains, and uh, there's no paths, there's no bridges, there's no, uh, you know, in the Black Mountains, there might be ruined fortresses, but the World's Edge Mountains, no fortresses of any kind. It's, it's just uh, pristine you know, titanic nature. So th those are my thoughts on random encounters, how not to do them. Don't do them randomly. Uh, do use them for pacing. Use them to show the area. Make everything have a reason. You know, showing off an area can be a great reason to do something. But just, oh, because I rolled a, a below 10 on my D20, that's not a good reason to do anything. That's random. That's uh, that's the dice having fun. The dice can't have fun. Don't involve them. <laughs> uh, you know, you can come to them for education uh, if you're not sure of something, or if you need to be impartial, like in combat. That's when dice are great. Anything that's more about telling a story, uh, you know, try to try to keep the dice out of it. Have, make everything have a reason. If something happens for, without a reason, find a reason for it. So they might meet an innkeeper. There's no reason for him to be in the game other than mechanically that the inn needs a keeper. But find something for that innkeeper to do. Find a quest that, that he needs the PCs for. You know, find a, a friendship, some dialogue. Find something for everything that gets introduced because time is money. You don't want to waste your time uh, on things that will never appear again. So make sure things reappear as often as possible. Uh, but that gets back into my Time is Money video. You can go check that out anytime that you want to. Uh, and I won't charge you any money either. But I'm going to sign off. Uh, let me know about random encounters in your game, how you do them. Uh, if you think the random tables are a good idea, uh, convince me of that. Uh, I'm open-minded. <laughs> If you've had really fun random encounters, let me know about those. I love random encounters. Uh, I think they can be tremendously fun. It's just uh, they should also serve a larger purpose. I'm going to sign out now. Everybody have a good day. Cheers.